Web applications often configure users' accessible directories to prevent file execution as a security measure to protect against malicious scripts from being executed on the web server. During this video, we see how an attacker can use path traversal vulnerability to bypass this restriction and upload a web shell to a different directory and ultimately get code execution on the web server. For the purpose of this video, we use a lab from Web Security Academy, and as always, you can find the link to this lab in the video description. This lab contains an image upload function, and the web server is configured to prevent execution of the uploaded files. So to solve this lab, we need to bypass this restriction and upload the web shell on the server and get access to a secret file, which is located in the Carlos home directory. All right, let's jump in and get started by clicking on access the lab. We need to log in into our account to access the file upload function. So we go to the login page, then fill out the username and password fields with our account credentials that we got from lab description and proceed to login. Once we log in into our account, we notice the image upload function. To review the upload function and identify the relevant HTTP requests for uploading and accessing an image, let's upload a normal image. Once we select the image from the local machine, we can go ahead and click on Upload. We see the image was successfully uploaded to Avatar's directory. Now we go back to my account page. In the Avatar sections, now we see the image that we have just uploaded. Now to identify the HTTP requests for uploading and accessing the image, we go to the Burp HTTP history. This HTTP POST request to slash my account slash avatar endpoint seems to be the request for uploading an image. By looking at the body of the request, we can confirm that this is the request for file upload. Next, we need to identify the request for accessing the image. This HTTP GET request is the request for accessing the uploaded image. Alright, to test the file upload function and check if we can upload the web shell to the web server, we send both these requests to burp repeater. Alright, in repeater we have two requests. The first tab contains the HTTP post request for uploading a file, so let's rename the tab to upload. And the second tab contains the HTTP GET request for downloading the file, so let's rename it to download. Now we go to the Upload tab. Let's see what happens if we try to upload the web shell on the server using the File Upload function. We need to change the file name and file content. So in the request body, first we change the file name to shell.php. Next, we remove the contents of the file and replace it with a simple PHP web shell. This simple PHP code is using the system function which takes a shell command from the URL parameter called cmd, execute that command, and return its output. So if we manage to upload this PHP file, then we can execute shell commands on the web server. Now we can go ahead and send this request. As we see the application didn't prevent us from uploading the PHP file, and the shell.php has been uploaded to avatar's directory on the web server. Now that we have uploaded the web shell, the next step is to access it and check if we can execute commands on the web server. So we go to the download tab. First, we change the file name in the URL path to shell.php. This tells the web server to execute the PHP code in the shell.php file. Next, we add the cmd URL parameter to the get request. The value of this parameter tells the PHP code what shell command to execute. For now, we use the id command, and if everything goes well, it should return the current user on the web server. So let's send the request. As we see, instead of executing the PHP code and returning the output of id command that we send in the cmd parameter, the server returns the content of the PHP file as plain text. This tells us that the avatar's directory, which the user's files are uploaded to, is configured to prevent file execution. Well, this is a common security measure used by many web applications to prevent the execution of users' uploaded files on the server. 
So to get code execution on this web server, we need to come up with a solution to bypass this restriction. A possible solution is to check if we can upload a web shell to another directory on the server that is not configured to prevent file execution. As we see, the avatar's directory is located within files directory. So if we can manage to upload the web shell to files directory and the files directory is not configured to prevent file execution, then we should be able to get code execution on the web server. However, to upload the web shell to files directory, first we need to check if the application is vulnerable to directory traversal and allow us to upload the PHP script to the files directory instead of avatars directory. Alright, let's go back to the upload tab. In the request body, we select file name value and add dot dot slash before the file name. This tells the application to go one level up in the directory structure of the web server and upload the PHP web shell to the files directory instead of avatars. Alright, let's see what happens when we send the request. In the HTTP response, we notice the application once again uploaded the web shell to avatars directory. This suggests that the application is validating the file name and has detected and removed the traversal sequence from the file name, therefore preventing the web shell from being uploaded to the files directory. So our first attempt was failed. So for the next attempt, let's see if we can bypass the file name validation by URL encoding the traversal sequence. So in the file name, we select the slash and press Ctrl U on the keyboard to URL encode the selected character. Now we can send the request. This time in the HTTP response, we notice dot dot slash was not removed from the file name. This shows the application is vulnerable to pass traversal and the web shell is uploaded to the parent directory of avatars. Now we go to the download tab to check if we can access the uploaded web shell in the files directory. Since we have uploaded the web shell to the files directory, we need to change the URL path to slash files slash shell.php and the CMD parameter is set to ID. If the files directory is not configured to prevent file execution, we should receive the output of ID command. OK, let's send the request. In the response, we see the application returns the output of ID command confirming Carlos is the current user on the web server. So we could successfully upload the web shell to the web server using path traversal vulnerability. Next, we use the ls command to list the files in the Carlos home directory. As we see, there is a secret file in the Carlos home directory. So we can use cat command to access the contents of the secret file. Now that we have the contents of the secret file, we copy it from the HTTP response. Then we go back to the web browser and submit the secret content. Finally, we get the message that we solved the lab. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, share with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more contents. Thank you for taking the time and watching this video and I'll see you in the next videos.